Hello, this is Mr. McLeod, and I will be doing a demo on getting started with uh, Greenfoot. Uh, so, if you open up Greenfoot, uh, this uh, I'm using the latest version since that's what you probably have at home. Uh, you'll notice that at first it just opens up Greeps, uh, most likely, because that's probably what you were working on last. Uh, so what you want to do is create a new scenario. So you go up to scenario, new scenario, uh, make sure you select, uh, Java, right? So let me just show that again. So you went up here, uh, stride is something different. So you want to make a new Java scenario. Uh, and then right in here, uh, make sure you find where you're at. So it turns out this actually is where I want it to be. Uh, but you, you decide where you want it, uh, and then name it whatever you want. So, uh, let's name it ball bounce and we hit create and that's going to create a new scenario. Uh, notice nothing popped up yet. Uh, this is due to Greenfoot's uh, tendency to not bring Windows fold, uh, forward when they should have. Instead, it's sitting here blinking down here. So if I click that, you can see here's my ball bounce project. Uh, so to make it a little bit simpler, let's go ahead and close this one. Uh, so we'll close that uh, grip scenario and then maximize this. So now we're just working in ball bounce. Uh, okay, so then uh, what this did for you already, uh, in the new Greenfoot, it looks like it creates a world, uh, already for you. Um, if you know, if you remembered from the demoing class, uh, the old Greenfoot didn't actually create the world for you. It made you create it. Uh, so you can go here to my world. Um, it's fine if it's named my world. If you want it to me name something else, uh, you can just go here where it says class my world and change that to ball world. Uh, and the next time it compiles, uh, it will uh, change that name. Now, a lot of times in the new Greenfoot, it compiles things for you as it goes. Uh, it turns out it looks like if I actually change a class name it's going to want me to specifically hit the compile button. So when I hit that uh, then it's going to compile uh, and uh, oh wow that's a little bit buggy. So it had an error, and that's because I needed to change this to Ball World 2. Uh, but that was some interesting, uh, it, it like hid the uh, text of my file until I selected it. Okay, well, I'm going to leave that in the video because you might run into that same error. Uh, it turned out just reselecting all the text revealed it. Um, okay, and now it's actually compiled successfully because this is now correct. It's important that the constructor name match exactly uh, the class name. Okay, so right now uh, when you call your constructor, the first uh, line of your constructor is to call super, uh, which is your world because class ball world extends world. So super always refers to the class that uh, this class extends. Um, okay, so s s calling super means you're actually calling the super constructor for world. So let's take a look in world and see that uh, in world there are two constructors, one that goes int, 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 and one that takes an int, 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 and an additional uh, boolean. Uh, the difference is that uh, the boolean determines whether the world is bounded uh, or unbounded. If it's false, it's unbounded, which means actors can travel past the edges. If it's not, uh, if it 
is bounded, so if this were true, or if you use this constructor, by default it's bounded, which means actors cannot go past the edge. Uh, so going back to ball world here, uh, we actually want it to be unbounded, so we're going to say false right there, um, so that actors can go past the edge. All right, uh, so then uh, what we have now is we have a world, uh, but we don't have an actor yet. Um, so if we go to actor, uh, we can say new subclass, and let's create a, uh, let's go ahead and create a ball. So this is a pretty good picture for a ball. Let's call it ball. All right, and uh, if we open that up, uh, all right, so if we open that up, here's ball. Well, this is kind of nice in the new green foot. They at least have an easier way of handling all the different tabs. Um, okay, so ball has some starter code in it already. Uh, it can say, it says right here that it extends actor. Um, and then this act method, this gets called uh, every frame whenever a actor is in a world. Um, so for now it's not doing anything. Um, so that means if we were to go to ball world, uh, oh, I just forgot, we could just go right here. If we go to the world and we want to add an actor, um, we can, we have to say what type of thing it is. So we can say ball, uh, Let's call it uh, bouncy ball, just to make it clear. It doesn't have to be called ball. It can be called anything. Uh, equals a new ball. So we create a new ball object. Um, and then after creating the ball object, we need to add it to the world. Uh, so we will say, uh, and again, let's go back to the APIs. I want you guys to see how I get this information. So in the world uh, class, you can see that uh, it has a add object, um, which adds an actor to the world. It takes an actor, an int, and an int. So the actor is the object you're adding. The first int is the x. Second int is the y. Uh, so going back here, we can say add object and we pass it bouncy ball uh, and uh, if we wanted to just you know first let's go ahead and just say 200 100 so it will add it to that position um, notice that in the new green foot um, even though there is this compile button up here uh, there is no compile button down here and that's because in fact uh, this is constantly getting compiled, um, and I believe every time I go back here, it just, it's as if I hit the compile button, it just compiles it automatically. So check it out, there's our ball. Um, FYI, if you're interested, you can also hold down shift while you have ball selected, and you can shift click and add as many balls as you want. Um, but just remember, when you hit reset, the only ball that actually automatically gets added is the ones uh, that are uh, is is the ones that are in the ball world constructor. Okay, so let's go back to this. Um, so we've added our bouncy ball. Now we want our ball to actually do things. So let's go back to ball again. Um, you could double click here, or this is nice that you can just select right over here, and we can say, okay, every tick our ball. Uh, it's going to take some action. So actually, let's look at the actor and see what actions can it take. Um, so let's say I wanted it to move. Um, there's two options. There's move some distance, which will move in whatever direction you're facing, uh, which you can change uh, by saying set rotation, uh, or turn towards, or turn. Um, but we're actually going to instead use this set location. So set location just says make your new location this one, x, y. Um, so if every act we said set location to 
whatever my previous location was, which again, we can find that back here. Uh, there's all these getters, right? So let's find get X and get Y. So not surprising. You can say get X um, and get Y, uh, but then we're going to add 2 to Y. So that's going to make the ball uh, move down by 2 because the uh, coordinate plane is uh, upper left corner 0, 0. Uh, y increases going down and X increases going to the right. All right, so this uh, will automatically finish compiling the moment I go back here. If I hit run, the ball starts falling. Hooray! Notice, because we said uh, the world is unbounded, the ball just keeps on falling right off screen. Um, this background is very boring, by the way. So you, anytime you could go to the ball world and say set image, um, and choose a different background. So uh, let's see what looks fun. How about space? Space is always fun. Okay. Um, so if I hit reset, my ball's back here. If I hit run again, it will start falling again. Uh, by the way, if I hit pause and then I hit run, it'll seem like, oh, my program isn't running, but it is. The ball's just already falling off screen. Um, you have to hit reset uh, to reset the program to the beginning. Uh, all right, so if you remember, uh, we had the ball falling by two each time, uh, but let's actually make that um, something that can change. I'm going to delete this comment for now. It's kind of in the way. Um, all right, and right up here, outside of any method, uh, I can make what's called instance variables. So if I said int uh, int x, uh, sorry, int dx equals, uh, let's give it a dx of two, for example, and we can give uh, dy. Uh, a value of 3. Um, so then we can change this so that uh, we move by uh, get x plus dx and get y plus dy so that uh, it changes by dx and dy each tick. If we go back here and hit run, now our uh, ball falls diagonally, but it still goes flying off the edge. So let's fix that. Um, so if we go back here into ball, we can say uh, if we are past the edge, we will reverse direction. Um, so let's say if we're past the bottom edge, let's just bounce up. Uh, I'm going to let you guys deal with the rest of the edges as part of your homework. So if uh, get y is greater than, uh, and then we're in the actor, class and uh, the width of the world is going to be from the world class. So if we look at the actor class, there is a get world. So I can say get world and now I have a world object and then on that object I can call anything that world objects have like get height. So then I can say dot get height uh, and so if my y value is greater than get height, then I'm going to say dy equals negative dy. And that will bounce me back. So if I go back here and hit run, hooray, it bounces back. Um, unfortunately, it's not perfect, though, because uh, if you look here, it goes into the edge and then bounces back. So that's uh, easy enough to fix. Uh, we actually want to know if the y of the ball um, plus the height is greater than uh, the get world dot get height. And we're going to fix that in the next video.